Hello all my lobotomized viewers. Today we're going to be talking about the interesting lost and mysterious locations iceberg. Now to start off with I love all the topics that are on this list. There are so many cool things you know civilizations that may or may not exist legends, really weird places. The iceberg has five tiers and over 100 topics. When you start off at the top, you got more well-known things like El Dorado, Stonehenge, that sort of thing. And further down, you get into some more weird, obscure things you probably don't know about, like the singing sand dunes of Liwa or the seven giants of Russia. And so without further ado, let's get into it. The beginning of tier one starts with Pompeii. Pompeii was an ancient city located in Italy back during the Roman Empire. Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD and it covered the city in 13 to 20 feet of volcanic ash. And whenever this happened, it flash froze everything and preserved so many things so that we could study them a lot better than if it hadn't happened. And this really made this such a clean cut example of like a lost civilization because like imagine you're back in the Roman Empire and maybe you're traveling to Pompeii to sell your cattle or something and you come across this massive pile of ash and you're just like, oh, wasn't there a city here? I thought there was. Maybe there's not. Maybe I'm crazy. So it became a lost civilization. But they found all kinds of stuff preserved super well in the ash. And what's interesting is whenever archaeologists started looking through all the stuff, they found bodies of people perfectly preserved, loaves of bread, wood, entire eggs, and even things like draft bones, which really showed how wealthy these people were if they were importing meat from like Africa or wherever other places they actually had drafts. And so this led archaeologists to realize how nice these people's lives were back in 79 AD because they found things like fast food restaurants and coliseums for their entertainment, really intricate artwork which would have taken a long time, and they had like an aqueduct system with running water. Next we have El Dorado. Now El Dorado is commonly associated with the legend about a city full of gold. The earlier stories of El Dorado happened during the late 1500s whenever all the Spanish started having this common story about this tribal ceremony where this chief would paint himself in gold dust, get completely covered in gold dust, and then get on this raft on this sacred lake where he would put piles of gold on this raft and then go out to the middle of the lake and start dumping all the piles of gold and precious gems out there and then dunk himself in the water and wash all the gold off. Stories of the ceremony sparked interest because obviously this civilization would have had like a huge abundance of gold and precious gems and they had to be pretty powerful to be able to do this. Allegedly, this city that was doing the ceremony was located somewhere in the northern part of South America. As stories grew even more about the city of gold, Spanish conquistadors believed it was either in Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, or northern Brazil. And what's funny is because they did so much searching for the city of gold, El Dorado, they ended up mapping much of northern South America and even the Amazon River. So that's crazy. Moving on to the Inca and Mayans. So I think the reason why this is on this iceberg is because these were both civilizations that got really powerful and had huge cities and then suddenly disappeared. Which I mean, the Mayan civilization didn't necessarily completely disappear, but it just wasn't the same as it was at its peak. Because at the peak of the Mayan civilization in 250 AD, there was actually 40 cities some speculated to even have 50,000 people, which was so amazing at this time because to sustain such a population, you had to have really good systems, really good agriculture, and you just had to be pretty darn advanced. But what's weird is roughly around 900 AD, everyone left the cities and moved into smaller tribes that were led by tribal chiefs, and nobody really knows for sure why. Some people think it was because of volcanic activity, excessive warfare, disease, overpopulation, or even soil exhaustion. But it's just so crazy to think that they had such massive cities all the way back in 250 AD in the Americas. It's just mind-blowing. Pangea. Um, there's not much to say about this. Pangea is the scientific idea that all the continents were once connected in one huge supercontinent called Pangea. So imagine North America is one continuous continent with South America, Europe, if you think that's a continent, Asia, Africa, Antarctica, they're all combined. The formations there would have been amazing. The huge chasms, the rivers and lakes, dying dinosaurs. 
Moving on, Bermuda Triangle. So the Bermuda Triangle is the area between the bottom of Florida to Bermuda down to Puerto Rico. It makes a big triangle, obviously. And this is a place where lots of planes and ships have disappeared under mysterious circumstances. More fringe claims about why they disappeared say that there was like aliens or sea monsters or even like portals to other universes that people accidentally fell into with their ships and planes or just other paranormal activities in general. While more scientific theories say that this is like an area that has magnetic variations, so if you try to use your compass, maybe you go the wrong way and end up hitting a shallow sandbar. And also I think that could cause radio interference too. Or some people think there's just really bad weather in this area. But a lot of the disappearances are still a big mystery. But I'm sure if you grew up hearing about the Bermuda Triangle, you were terrified of it. I know I heard about it and I was just like, oh my gosh, there's a place you can go where you just disappear. I think I thought it was on land. I thought it was like in the woods for some reason. Anyways, Easter Island. So this is an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and it's like one of the most isolated places on Earth. Like if you look at a map of it, the nearest continent to the island is actually 2,182 miles away. And if you look at this island from space, like at the Earth, it almost looks like there's no land at all. That's how secluded it is. What's crazy is on this tiny island in the middle of nowhere, Somehow, these people have created over 900 massive statues carved out of stone and they're still being discovered today. And these statues depicted humans, they were called Moai, and some were as tall as 33 feet high and weighed 86 tons. So in order to have created these massive heads, they must have had an insanely solid and thriving industrial culture. However, since they were so isolated and they had no written language, we know nearly nothing about their culture. Another interesting thing I read is that archeologists actually think they had the largest palm tree in the world at one point in history, but I think they disappeared. And that's because they think that this civilization basically committed ecocide, which is whenever you destroy your ecosystem. And the reason they did this is because in order to create all these massive heads, it took a ton of resources. They were cutting down lots of trees. And then they think at one point in history, they ended up all reverting to cannibalism and the population dropped dramatically. But we don't know any of that for sure. All we can assume is that at one point in time, there was somehow a thriving civilization on this tiny island that was only like 14 miles across, I think. Area 51 in Roswell. So the Roswell incident to start out with was a situation where a rancher found a bunch of debris on his land and he called the police to see what it was and the police referred him to I think the military and whatever this debris was was so important to the US military that they actually carried out different pieces on different military aircraft so that in case one of the planes crashed they would still have a sample of whatever it was they found. What's funny is that the United States Army announced that they had in their possession a flying disc. But what a lot of people think is that the military actually knew exactly what it was. It was like a top secret project where they flew these weather balloons way up in the atmosphere and then tried to detect sounds from the Soviets doing atomic bomb tests. And that the reason they said they had a flying disc was to start like a whole bunch of rumors about aliens and UFOs so that people would just think the claims were stupid and then just completely divert the attention into a different direction. However, many believe there was aliens there and that they had bodies of aliens and it was a flying saucer. And there's even a guy 30 years after the Roswell incident who came out, he's a retired US Air Force guy named Jesse Marcel, who said that the weather balloon thing was just a cover story and that extraterrestrials were there and they found gray aliens and bodies and multiple saucers in the area and they reverse engineered them but there's just like a lot of he said she said believe what you want area 51 i'm sure you guys know what this is we're gonna storm the place highly classified air force base in nevada um, many secret or experimental aircraft have been developed there or flown there and like the Nighthawk was created there, and there's obviously still secret aircraft being produced at this point. Maybe not at Area 51 because everybody's watching it, but I mean, the military always has secret projects we have no idea about. They have some advanced stuff, guys. Not that I would know, but I mean, they do. It's just a thing they always have. Anyways, a lot of people think Area 51 has alien craft or had alien craft. People like Bob Lazar claim that he worked there in 1950 
and he worked on reverse engineering flying disks. So that would be like anti-gravity technology. And he also talked about how he had talked with an extraterrestrial through telepathy there at the base. But many people say that he just made all that up and there's even like a lot of people that don't think he even worked there. But I will say, I actually went to Area 51 uh, last year. I was just driving through Nevada and just so happened to be driving past there and I went to the front gate and saw it. It was kind of cool. But whenever we were driving in this certain area uh, that was close to Area 51, we got stopped for construction work, which I, I say that with parentheses because it was just one lady holding a stop sign. There's nobody there. The road was just completely desolate, but she stopped us for like 15 minutes no cars behind us, no cars in front of us, and we waited there for 15 minutes, and then she let us go, and there was no road work whatsoever on the road. I thought that was really weird. What I think it could have been is that they were maybe flying experimental aircraft overhead, and they didn't want people to drive past and see that. Not that it was that for sure, but anyways, kind of weird. Moving on. Alcatraz Island. I'm not going to say much about this. Uh, it was a famous prison. It was once called America's Devil Island, I guess because it housed people like Al Capone and George Machine Gun Kelly. But they ran this prison for 29 years and it was really maximum security. It had 200 inmates at a time. And I think of all the inmates that were there throughout history, three actually did manage to escape for sure. But there's a huge controversy on whether they drowned or whether they were able to swim across or make some sort of raft to get across. Uh, but a lot of people think they died, and some people think they actually survived. But yeah, it was a secret place. Stonehenge. I'm sure you guys all know what Stonehenge is. It's a very famous prehistoric structure in England of a bunch of stones. They think it was built around 3000 to 1500 BC, which is a really long time ago. But it is the most architecturally sophisticated prehistoric stone circle in the world. Supposedly, this structure with 20 to 30 ton stones was somehow built by the Druids, which the Druids were these prehistoric British priests that maybe used this area for sacrifices. Other theories about how it was built ranges from it being built by giants during ancient times to the famous wizard Merlin magically transporting the stones from Ireland. And people even theorize that it was built as an alien landing site or just built as a place for trade. So yeah, very, very mysterious place. Had they built it? Did the giants build it? Was Marlin there? Yeah. Atlantis. Atlantis is a possibly mythical advanced city that was said to have sunk into the ocean. It was first mentioned by the Greek philosopher Plato 2,000 years ago. Plato said that Atlantis was a naval power that conquered many parts of Western Europe and Africa 9,000 years before Greece was even created. So that's a really long time ago. And some say that Atlantis was just a metaphor, while others say it was a real place that was incredibly advanced and sunk into the ocean due to catastrophic earthquakes and floods. Other people speculate that like the Richet structure, which is the Eye of the Sahara, was actually Atlantis. I watched this podcast that explained that the Eye of the Sahara had a dozen similarities to the description that Plato gave of Atlantis. Some of those similarities were that the Eye of the Sahara had three circles of water with two land masses in the middle, which is what it would look like if it was flooded, that it had an opening to the south where water could go through, it was like a canal, and that there was mountains positioned to the north, the Atlas Mountains. Anyways, it's really strange that it had so many similarities, you know, maybe it could have been. I think it's really kind of compelling. Um, they say it's really hard to go there and do research there because it's so dangerous. The Mariana Trench. So the Mariana Trench is the deepest place in the ocean and the lowest point that humans can get to on the planet because there's probably deeper places. It's over 36,000 feet below sea level and stretches 43 miles wide. So that's like a huge area that needs to be explored and has just barely been explored. To put that into perspective, the Challenger Deep, which is the lowest point, is thousands of feet deeper than Mount Everest is high. So picture this, if you're outside and you look up and you see a commercial aircraft, a commercial airliner flying up in the sky, imagine you are on the bottom of the ocean in the Mariana Trench looking up, that airplane would be like the bottom of a boat sitting on the surface of the water. That is so deep. Anyways, since it's so hard to travel down there, Roughly only six people have been to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, 
And one of those people was actually James Cameron, which is the director who created Avatar and The Abyss. You should watch that movie. But yeah, 12 people have walked on the moon, and not one person has walked on the bottom of the ocean. Because you would be crushed instantly. So Chernobyl was considered the worst nuclear disaster in history. Back in the 80s in Soviet Union era Ukraine, a nuclear power plant reactor had a meltdown. And a meltdown is basically when a reactor gets too hot and melts the uranium, causing catastrophic failure. What's weird is it all could have been avoided. The power plant had abused basically every safety protocol and cut unbelievable corners for this to all go wrong. The exclusion zone in Chernobyl is the radius around Chernobyl that remains so toxic that nobody can go into it because of the radioactivity. There's a place inside the zone called the Elephant's Foot, which is where the nuclear material melted and dripped down and then cooled to f create what looks like an elephant foot. And the crazy thing about this area is there is an unknown crystal formation that was created because of the meltdown that is now called Chernobylite. And I guess they can't get too much information on it or study it just because, you know, you'd probably die really quick from radiation. But what's really interesting about the exclusion zone around Chernobyl is that you can actually take a tour of Chernobyl, but there are areas really close to the reactor where you still can't go, and you can't take pictures of the Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant Reactor Unit 4 from certain angles still. To this day, for some reason, you're not allowed to take pictures at certain angles. And people say that's for some sort of safety reason. I guess because there's like a war going on or something, I don't know. Anyways, the Egyptian pyramids. But yeah, it seems that those pyramids are super advanced to have been built by the Egyptian civilization at that time period. Either they had some sort of extremely high technology or were super efficient or had some knowledge we didn't know about. Because what's crazy is they built those pyramids, the main pyramids, the big ones, so precise to the geographic placement of True North, it's unbelievable. In case you don't know, there's a magnetic north and then there is a true north. Magnetic north is where the compass points and true north is roughly 1200 miles off. So somehow the Egyptians were able to know where true north was by... I don't know how because I don't... it just doesn't seem like it should be possible. So somehow this ancient Egyptian civilization aligned these pyramids not to magnetic north but to true north almost perfectly but i'm sure you've seen the theories you know people say the pyramids were built by aliens some say it was built by giants some say that they had some sort of telepathic ability to move stuff which almost does seem like the case if we're looking at the king's chamber with that massive stone that just should not have been able to be placed there i'm not saying that's you know what it actually was though but what I find really interesting is that if you go right now and you look up the purpose to why the pyramids were built, you know what it says? It says they're a tomb. But not a single body has been found in the Old Kingdom pyramids. The Old Kingdom pyramids are the really big ones. But if you look it up, it's going to say they're tombs and they haven't found any bodies. So what's actually going on there? We have no idea what the pyramids actually were. Okay, Holy Grail location. This is the last one in this tier. So the legend of the Holy Grail is that it is the cup that Jesus used in the Last Supper. Matthew 26, 27 to 29 says, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Because, you know, Jesus is a sacrifice to cover our sins and redeem us to have eternal life. But for some reason, the legend of this specific cup is that it has some sort of supernatural powers and like it kind of got added to some guy back in medieval times added more random lore about how Joseph of Arimathea collected more blood in the same cup from the Last Supper from Jesus' body after he was crucified and that for some reason that now has supernatural powers. Anyways, Holy Grail location. We don't know where it is. Uh, there's a whole bunch of random grails all over the world. I think there's like 200 something. A lot of people think that the original Holy Grail or cup was gifted to King Ferdinand the Great back in 1055 AD whenever a Muslim was trying to reduce tensions in Spain during like the crusade times. But there's just so many stories of like the Holy Grail and that it being like this bejeweled golden chalice which, I mean, I don't think Jesus would have been using a 
golden chalice. I think he would probably would have been using like a clay cup, and that would have just like deteriorated, I would assume. But what's really interesting is throughout history, different people have searched for it. Like the legend of King Arthur kind of turned into him searching for the Holy Grail. A more historical one is people like Himmler, who was the leader of the SS, the Nazi party in World War II, was searching for different supernatural artifacts like Thor's hammer and the Ark of the Covenant and now the Holy Grail. And that he looked really, really hard for the Holy Grail. He had one guy on it the whole time trying to find it, but the guy just couldn't find a single trail on finding the Holy Grail itself. Yeah, but if we're all being honest, the Holy Grail is probably destroyed. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Stick around. This is going to be a really fun series. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for getting lobotomized and watching all my videos. If you are watching and you have not gotten a lobotomy, please click the subscribe button and you will instantly have a piece of your brain missing. But seriously, there's going to be five more tiers of this, so probably five more videos on this series. So if you like it, just let me know and I'll see you in the next one.